we're back. We're back. It took a little bit, but we're back and recharged and ready to finish this game without hiding at all to get that damn platinum trophy. This is part two, by the way. Y you won't understand anything that's happening in this video unless, of course, you watch part one. It's right here. I mean, come on, listen, just trust me, all right? Y literally, nothing will make sense. It's out of context. It doesn't even make any sense, so. Okay, but I'm done wasting time. We had a pretty long intro on the last one. We're not, we're not doing that this time. We are jumping right into it with parts and service. <laughs> so happy. Woo! Parts and service. The scariest part of the game is up first. I'm so happy. Listen, okay, you guys know the drill. The endos move when we don't look at them and slowly lock us into these cramped claustrophobic hallways. Apparently, you can actually hide in this area, but I never did that even when I could. So, I'm gonna double not do it when I can't. We start off opening wall number one in this little area over here, and there is only one endo we have to worry about. Now, despite my hesitation, you can actually get decently close to these endos before they attack you, so keep that in mind when you're trying to squeeze past them. Once you open the second door, there will be no other endos activated until you open the third door, so all you have to worry about is the first endo you encounter chasing you down this hallway. Guys, I lied. Apparently another endo does actually activate behind that endo. I just noticed while I was editing this video. But that should tell you how much of an effect that endo has on this sequence if I just noticed right now in editing for a split second that that endo activates. The one that's chasing you originally is the only one that's still a threat because it's in front of that endo and they don't really have a way of passing by each other. So yeah, keep that in mind. After you open the third door, however, an endo you've already ran past further down the hallway will activate. This leads to something I honestly don't really understand about their behavior. It seems like once you get a certain distance away from the endos, they stop chasing after you because the original endo that was chasing me is now nowhere to be found after the second endo activates. But sometimes when I double back, I swear old endos can re-aggro. This leads to the conclusion that I don't really understand how the endos work. So my best tip is similar to the daycare. Get in and out as fast as you can and keep your nerves in check. Things only really start getting hard when you activate the fourth button, which is down here. At this point, two new endos in that room, which you walked past already, will activate along with the previous one that was already activated from the third door. This is difficult because as the two are coming from the left side of the room, an endo is coming down the hallway to block the door. This is what I'm talking about by getting out fast. Get through the door quickly and get to a corner or just kind of any area that blocks you on multiple sides where the only way that an endo could get to you is right in front of you, which is where you're looking. The difficulty with this is that these endos are fast and if you get cornered over by the button, you are going to have a much harder time getting out. So just get out quick. What's weird though is while I was waiting in my little corner, when I left the corner, the three endos were suddenly gone. And I'll be fully honest with you, I don't know why. I don't know where they went. It seems like this area is very scripted, which makes some endos have really weird paths, but I don't really know how it works. I don't understand it. It's very confusing. Now, also what's really annoying about this area is that Roxy is walking around on the floor above in the atrium. This makes it very difficult to tell what's the sound of an endo moving and what's the sound of Roxy moving. You really do ruin everything you're involved in, don't you? When you're not even on the same floor, you're still bugging me. But even though those three are gone, there's still an endo that will activate at the end of this hallway. So just run past them, fairly simple. He'll chase you pretty far, so be wary of that. But other than that, he's not a very difficult threat. Once you hit the fifth button, other endos behind him will activate, but they don't really affect much due to being behind the other endo that was already chasing you. So you don't even really have to pay them much attention at all either. Finally, we are at the final battle of this place. It's the security office. Which is definitely the most intimidating, but honestly, isn't that hard if you know what you're doing? The security badge is in the center of the room, and once you take it, numerous endos in the room will activate. But it's super easy to just take the badge and then run to the door while you're collecting the badge and get out really fast. 
Seriously, while the animation of collecting the badge is happening, the endos are not activated. So you can just run to the door, wait at the door, and as soon as the door opens, you're right through. Now, I did personally almost have a heart attack when my flashlight started to run out of battery, right as all these endos activated. But we got through. First try, even, because, you know, we're the best. Oh, and do note that the enders down the hallway are still there, so that they're gonna start coming after you even after you leave the door. Oh, and uh, number two, that the endos actually can leave their hallway and can get through if you leave the door open. So uh, watch out for that. Just get through the vent as quickly as you can. Don't bother trying to deal with these guys more than you have to. <sighs> Finally, we're out of that trouble now. And now we can watch Vanessa taunt Freddy for a little while. His name is Gregory. You know how I know that? His fast watch kept repeating it in your voice. Gregory, are you there? Gregory? Wait, she... Wait, wait, wait. She has access to my fast watch? How does she have access to my fast watch? How does... How does that make any sense? If she has access to my fast watch and everything that Freddy tells me, why wouldn't she be easily able to find me everywhere I go? Okay, so now we just say hi to our friendly looping animation endo and do our first repair on Freddy. Great, parts and services finally done. We're really good at this, aren't we? We travel up this little elevator, and then we take that vent that we took at the beginning of the game into Chica's green room. Grab our party pass. And guess what? Moon's pack to make our life harder. Great. I love Moon. He just comes at the best points and definitely does not annoy me and make me want to shut off the game. No, he's a very fun guy. He makes us go all the way over to Freddy's room because he teleported right into the entrance of where I wanted to go to hide from him. So that's fantastic. I mean, maybe he's smart. I don't know. That was Seems just like dumb luck to me, but what do I know? And now we can just charge ourselves up in Freddy's room and wait for the next hour. Alright, our next job is to dismantle an animatronic of our choosing, but we're gonna take a little break from the main missions to get some upgrades first. We're after the shoes, the hoodie, a few fast drinks, and a flashlight upgrade. These upgrades are really helpful with the shoes making us run way faster than we can before. The hoodie allows us to have a smaller aggro range and making us overall harder for animatronics to see, and the fizzy fast drinks improve our stamina. The flashlight upgrade upgrades our flashlight battery. That one's a real shocker right there. Now, we're not getting every upgrade in the game, just the ones we can get fairly easily without going too far out of the way. First one we're getting is the flashlight upgrade, which is right here in this little music area right behind Rockstar Row. And I'm not really sure if I could have gotten this earlier in the game. I don't know if I just missed it or if there was security level. I don't really know, but we're getting it right now. That's what's important. Next up on the list is Chica's Fizzy Fast Drink, which is in the opening area. And this one I'm sure that you can't get because you don't have high enough security level in the opening to get it. So the only way to get this one is to go back into this area. Next upgrade we're grabbing is right here. It's Monty's Fizzy Fast Drink, which we definitely should have grabbed in L-Trips while we were there in our last video, but oops, I didn't know it was here. So, the shoes are the last one we can get for now until we progress a little further. They're located in the semi-hidden area of the Glamrock Beauty Salon. It's kind of hidden back here. The shoes will be inside one of the bathrooms around here. Just take Freddy on in and you can waltz on in really easily, because Freddy doesn't count as hiding, so we're good. I'll take what I can get. Princess Quest is also here too, if you wanna play that, but we don't really care about that. That's that's not what we're here for. We already did that. That, that was that was that was the past. Well, for me. You guys didn't see that, but I did that by myself, and it was not exactly an unenjoyable experience, but I'll say this, it also was not exactly pleasurable. Alright, so we got all we can get for now. If we want anything else, we're gonna need security level five, so we gotta get moving. We got an animatronic hit list, and Monty is number one right now. Why are we killing Monty? Well, number one, I like the Faz Cam better than the Faz Blaster. Number two, Chica's route has way more situations where we need to hide, such as the Fazer Blaster and Chica's boss fight itself. And number three, Chica's area is scarier, and I don't want to have to deal with the lore implications of the Sticky Note Room. I'll leave MatPat to deal with the recreation of the Afton family down in some random sewer, even though no one should know or understand who these people were because they were a family about 40 years ago, and my god, can we just move on from the Afton family? Seriously, they probably weren't even a family for any of the games that we play. Like, they probably were already split up before that. Why do we care so much, okay? Why do we care? 
I mean, who built this down here? Why are they down here? Was it Gregory? Was it Elizabeth? Was it Charlie? By the way, all of these people that theorists think could have built this recreation of a dysfunctional family are people who have been killed, came back, then put to rest again. On three, one, two. Somehow Palpatine returned. Yes, give up your spirit. They don't belong to you. <laughs> My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. Because nobody seems to stay dead in this franchise anymore. I mean, you know something's wrong, with the theory that has the most evidence involves bringing back a character who has been narratively killed off twice already. See? That's why we're not killing Chica. It reminds me that this is, <clears throat> a game that does not make much sense. So, after having a wave of insanity, we need to focus on the task at hand. We give the party pass to the guy and walk on into Monty's Gator Gall. We walk right on through this area with Freddy. It's actually really easy. I mean, there's like a charging area and everything. It's super easy. We go into the back to the security office and take security level five. Once we do this, alarms turn on trying to scare us, but nothing actually happens. No one, no one comes after you. I was expecting some intense gameplay, but I guess I'm just here to be disappointed today. We also take the Mazer size ticket and the FazCam really easily. When you compare this to what it takes to get the Fazer Blaster on Chica's route, it's literally a joke. Almost every important item for this run is just in this room. It's almost like they didn't have enough time to finish this route and threw everything into this room. I cannot confirm this, but Steel Wool has remained quiet on these developments. I'll keep you all posted, don't you worry. We can also grab this flashlight battery upgrade back here, which is more difficult to get than any of the other items we just gathered, despite these being main items and this being a little bit more time that we can use our flashlight. Who cares? They're equal. I mean, this one, yeah. Stun animatronics and actually be able to save yourself from jump scares? Uh, no. I'll take the more difficult route of getting, like, about a minute longer with my flashlight. That's what I want. Now, I will actually say this, this this is difficult. Just just be careful. The spot is really annoying when you're trying to get this upgrade. Now that we have security level 5, we can go on a quick detour before Mazer Size and get the hoodie. This detour is going to take us to the bakery right above Monty Gator Golf. We just walk into the bakery and go back here into this bathroom that for some reason requires level 5 security. I can't imagine that the bakers that work back here have level 5 security clearance, so I just imagine that if they want to go to the bathroom, they have to walk all the way outside of the bakery to the outside bathroom, and this bathroom is only for if Vanessa or any other security guard just wants to piss them off. That's my own headcan. I don't really know if that's true, but once again, Steel Wool has remained quiet on this, so, uh, I don't know, uh, might be true. Gonna have to mark that one down for might be true, okay? It was Honestly, it would not be the most ridiculous thing in this game, so take that as you will. Also, I don't even know why there's a hoodie in here, but whatever, we're taking it. Now, after that detour, we walk into Mazer Size and go into the control room. But before that, we realize we need a key to the worst puzzle of all time before we can continue. So, to get the key, we're journeying all the way back to the daycare into the Superstar Theater. Whereas the most fun part of this area is summoning Freddy and watching him run the most ineffective and comical path in the world to get to us. I just like watching him run, it's kind of funny. He looks funny when he's running. We sneak on through to the basement of the theater, and fun fact, nothing will actually be able to kill you or activate down here until you get the key. So if you want anything down here, do it before you get the key, and then get the key afterwards so you don't have to deal with the endos. Also, just summon Freddy to your side right before you gather the key, take the key, go in Freddy, and then just stroll on out of here. It just completely trivializes, like, the scariest enemy in this game. That's, I don't know why, that's, that's just kind of, that's just kind of funny to me. 
Now, we do have to rush out of this area, because walking all the way out of the theater in Freddy takes about 3 to 4 power, of which we have 4. So we clutch our controllers severely as we make our way out of here with just enough power. It, it was pretty darn close. Now we walk over to the charger and start charging up Freddy, while some intrusive thoughts start to eat at our minds while he charges. Hmm. Sometimes, Sometimes I wonder, I, wonder if I just I have just nostalgia, have nostalgia for, this for this series, and, and that, the that the reason, reason I'm, here I'm here still is, is, is just because of that nostalgia, or maybe I, I just feel like I spent too much time with the series to go back now and now I'm stuck in a loop of- Hey, Freddy charged up! We head back to Mazer's size and remember that I hate this puzzle so much. Okay, it was an exaggeration to say that this is the worst puzzle ever, but it wasn't that big of an exaggeration. Most people don't even really know how it works and just look up a combination of button presses to solve the puzzle, which for some reason changed with a patch. I don't know how the, the solution of it changed at some point, but somehow it changed. It, it's weird. I don't, I don't get it. But I'm here to school you guys, so listen up. The goal of this puzzle is to get this green piece right here into this corner where the vent is. This is the only piece that allows you to enter the vent. These buttons move the rows and columns one piece in whichever direction you have it set to, be it horizontally or vertically. So, if it's set to horizontal and you click the top button under the one, it will move row one, which is this one, to the left by one. Now, that doesn't sound that bad. The problem with this puzzle is it's difficult to see exactly what pieces are where and what's going on because the cameras are at the side angle, but also, the game doesn't tell you any of this. Listen, unless you get this very, very missable message inside of the basement of the Superstar Theater, you will have absolutely no idea what you're doing in this puzzle. Seriously, no clue. And even if you get that message, let's just say hypothetically you did, if you got that message, all it tells you is that the green one needs to go in the corner. That's all it tells you. That's everything it tells. That's the whole message. Yeah, yeah. The controls or what connects to the green one or maybe how anything works in the puzzle. No, that's not necessary information. I'm sorry. That's not good, all right? I don't think I need to spell that out. That's not good, okay? It's annoying. That's why this puzzle's bad. It doesn't tell you how to solve it. It just sits you in this room with a bunch of buttons and it's like, you know what? Solve this. Figure it out, idiot. So, my tip is just to put the green one in place, and then put this blue one right here into its position, and then once these two are in position, just kind of mess with the other rows until you find a path that works, because there's definitely multiple paths that will lead you into it after you put those two in place. This is uh, my solved version of it, by the way, if you want to look at it, give a little hint. I hope it doesn't get patched or something, and then this is wrong, but whatever, this worked for me. So yeah, cool, we did it. Finally. Now we go through that vent and we head into the boss battle. Boss battle. That's kind of a kind of, kind of like a stretch of the word, but yeah, boss battle. Now, killing Monty is pretty simple. Fill the bucket while avoiding Monty. We gotta be quick though. Don't stick to a single gun for too long because it seems like when you get shots in the bucket it calls him over, so be wary of that. Monty can really just fall anywhere, so always keep your eyes peeled and run away as soon as you see him. Get to a corner hide for a little bit, and he'll lose aggro pretty easy. He's very unaggressive in this area. I would say the most difficult part about this area is bracing your ears for hearing the sound of him sighting you about 50 million times while you're in here. Successfully marking Monty off our hit list.
We take his claws and return to parts and service. Once we attach his claws to Freddy and have a brief break, but before God damn it, Moon, why are you here? Why are you always here? You're always here to ruin my day, aren't you? Just run over and hide in the charger, you know how it is. Is the reality, the reality that this that series, series that has just gotten just too big to fail and now the quality of certain projects, certain projects is, isn't needed to be reached? Be reached. The, standard the standard is just completely just left, left and there's, and there's no, no quality, quality assurance like there was before. Or was, or was this game just rushed, rushed for some unknown some reason and now I'm now here playing, playing this game to 100% to fill some void of... Cool, now that we have Monty's Claws, we can enter Roxy Raceway. Because number two on our animatronic hit list is Roxanne Wolf. I can hardly contain my excitement. Once we smash through the gate with Freddy's new ability, we have officially entered the area. Hey, I'm Roxanne Wolf. If you're looking for high speed motor mayhem, Roxy Raceway is the place to be. Sign up today and be a winner. Nobody likes a loser. Well, I don't like you. How about that? Once we're inside, we have to find a staff bot that can drive one of these go-karts. Once again, taking Freddy through this place is the best approach due to there being a charging area right in the back here, and numerous staff bots along with Roxy herself patrolling the area. I visit the sinkhole just to look at it for a second because, while well, I'll be honest, I like the overall presentation and the look of the sinkhole with the underground pizzeria and all that, but I've always been confused by the logistics of it. I was really confused on what idiot decided to build them all on top of the FNAF 6 pizzeria, but with the recent theories pointing to someone at the top of Fazbear Entertainment actually working to bring back Afton, it makes a little bit more sense, but... What still confuses me is how they built this mall on top of the pizzeria in the first place. I mean, how did the FNAF 6 pizzeria sink into the ground? Like, we see the outside of the pizza plex, it's on like, normal elevation. This pizzeria is really far underground. How did that happen? Did an earthquake suck it up? I mean, seriously. And wasn't the FNAF 6 pizzeria, like, in a completely normal town? That was at least the impression I got. The secret images of the animatronics in the alleyway just make it look like a normal town. Did Fazbear Entertainment demolish the town to build the Pizzaplex? Did they rebuild the ground from the chaos of tectonic plates moving to suck up a random pizza place to put it 100 so feet underground? I don't know. <laughs> People are always so confused about how William returned and what the blob is, but what about the geography of the FNAF universe? Nobody ever talks about that. Aside from that, we go over to this go-kart and realize that the staff bot is missing its head, so we can't use this go-kart. So, we have to go all the way over to the other side of this place and go to this random crate that jump scares us and gives us the head. I can't believe I actually got scared by this, I'm losing my touch. So, our next step is to repair the head because it's not currently in a functioning state. We have to take it to the repair station, which is in the security office located in the West Arcade. But to access it, we need a dance pass, which is found right over here in this garage. Surprisingly, it's not this difficult to get bag that I first tried, which feels a little bit more obvious to me, but it's not this one, so don't waste your time trying to get this like I did. Once we grab our party pass, we head on out of Roxy Raceway and get caught by a staff bot that doesn't spawn anything to come and kill us. This game continues to confuse me. We give this bot the dance pass and head on up to the West Arcade. Alright, the West Arcade is up next and I'm sweating just thinking about it. <sighs> See, the West Arcade is a conflicting place to me. On one hand, I love the design of this place, and I love DJ Music Man, it's really cool. This place just overall looks really awesome. But there are just so many damn staff bots in this place, like way too many, seriously, they're everywhere. I bet there are at least around 20 of them in this area, and that's at least. Along with that, there's also what's left of Monty after the incident, and Chica. They're also roaming the place too. So in these densely packed areas, there are staff bots and two animatronics roaming. So needless to say, there's a lot to be wary of. What doesn't help is that we actually have to end up sneaking all the way to the top of the arcade, back down to the bottom, and then back up to the top again, making you have to go through the overpopulation of staff bots multiple times. And I haven't even brought up DJ Music Man yet, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
First, what we need to do is we need to sneak on up to the security office at the top of the area. On the first sneak up to the office, Monty and Chica are not here yet, so it makes getting up slightly easier, but dodging through the numerous staff bots is still going to be no easy task. Once we get to the top, the power goes out and we have to go all the way down to the bottom. Bear in mind that visibility is reduced because of the power outage, and now Monty and Chica are patrolling. Be particularly wary about Chica, who is likely to spot you very soon after you leave the arcade storage area. She doesn't patrol directly the entrance to the arcade storage, but she is only about two groups of arcade machines away from it, so be careful to not run right into her after you turn around a corner. I get spotted and very nearly died right here, but I dodged and weaved my way down to the bottom. I probably should have used the fast cam, but I'll be honest, I forgot I had it. Now, since we're not hiding, I had to get pretty creative with how I avoided her. And I mean, really creative. I don't know how this worked, but it seemed to. The elevator doesn't open while the power is out, so you can't hide in there, keep that in mind, because 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 you, I guess you'll be stuck hiding like around this little corner. I, re I really don't know how she didn't see me. Now we walk on over to DJ Music Man and flip the first switch. Great job. Safety protocols deactivated. Prams act. Front DJ protocols. Reticulating splines. Please reset circuit breakers to all zones. Three zones remain. Janitorial service. Arcade. Arcade. This is where things get real. There are three switches we gotta flip. One is in the boys' bathroom in a janitorial closet. One is on the bottom floor of the arcade over by the stairs. And the other is on the top floor of the arcade hidden in a little corner. We head on over to the bathroom to flip the first one and run into an issue. When Music Man sticks his head in over on the right side, I don't know what to do. Because whenever I try to go to the left side, I die. I never have this problem when he sticks his head through the left door, so now, after some intense research, because I didn't know what was going on, I am glad to say that I don't know what is going on. I'm glad I have footage of his head appearing on the right side, because I couldn't find anyone talking about it at all. I don't know, maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I didn't find anyone talking about it. Which leads me to the conclusion that either you should still just run to the right even when he sticks his head on the right side, which I've gotta be honest with you, I haven't tried, so I cannot confirm this, this is just a theory, or the part is broken when he sticks his head on the right side. So, overall, if there is one conclusion we can take from this, we're avoiding having him stick his head to the right side. It seems like whatever door you look at first is which door he starts sticking his head through. So, just look at the left side first and then dash out the right door pretty easy. It's not a very hard area, it's just a weirdly set up area. Now, the next lever is by the stairs that take us up to the top floor. This one is pretty difficult to get to due to some staff bot overcrowding, and Monty is actually patrolling on the inside of this little loop here. So the goal is flip the switch quickly and get out. Even if you are spotted by a staff bot or Monty, it seems like if you're quick you still don't really have to deal with him for very long because it seems his aggro range is really small once you start running up these stairs and he'll usually leave you alone. The next switch is easily the hardest due to it being in the area with the most staff bots and Chica patrolling. Without hiding, speed is our most valuable survival skill. Running through this area and not wasting any time is our best approach. The lever's on the wall when you go to the left of the staircase. You are almost guaranteed to be spotted or caught by a staff bot at some point, so just be quick. This lever also blends in really well, so with how fast we're trying to go, make sure you don't miss it. God damn it, there are so many staff bots here, there's too many. It, it ruins this area, I swear to god. For an area that is kind of really, really necessary to be fast, and is playing fast-paced music, the amount of times that you can get grabbed and slowed down is truly maddening. Once we get all the switches flipped, we run as quick as we can and get caught like four times, but we finally make it back into the storage location. 
I'm not sure if Chica can actually follow you back here, but either way, just get away from the door and she'll lose interest eventually. Now, we got one final switch to flip at the end of the storage area. Man, I gotta admit, I still love this part, it's really good. We just dash away from him with the shoes, so this is really, really easy. The shoes give us such an advantage in this area. It's really, really essential to have this upgrade for it. I've actually never done this area without the shoes, so I don't even really know how difficult this little chase sequence would be without them. But we dash on into the office, and we have officially completed the DJ Music Man boss fight. This one is probably the biggest stretch of the word because there's only two actual encounters with DJ Music Man himself. The real boss fight of this place is the staff bots, which is probably my biggest problem with this area. I've dealt with a lot of staff bots already at this point, and stuffing a ton of them in here takes away from this area more than it adds to the difficulty. This boss fight should have actually been about DJ Music Man hunting me. Not every enemy in the game stuffed into a dark and difficult to navigate area. That's just not very fun to me. But hey, it's technically not every enemy in the game because Roxy's not here. At least this area got something right. But I've digressed. We take the staff bot head to the repair station and fix it on up. I know you all can't see it, but I have a large grin on my face due to the appearance of this mission. I'm just very, very happy to see it. Now, we can finally leave this place, and oh yeah, I forgot, we have to go all the way down again. So I guess really we end up going all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, and then all the way down again. Fantastic. And I get caught again, and run away again. I just, I love this area, I love how densely packed it is. Now, I have waited for this moment for a long, long time. We head on into the Roxy Raceway once again, ready to take care of business and cross off another animatronic from our hit list. And from where they saw you, it's that simple. This self-conscious overrated pile of garbage has no idea where I'm at. <laughs> Idiot. Eventually, Roxy's army of sins unfortunately distract you, talking to run directly into you. There's only one entrance to the top floor, and guess what again? Who's guarding it? I'll give you one guess, genuine. Why are you here? Go away! See, Roxy, Chica would rather disappear from existence before ending my progress. That's why she's better than me. Sorry. Idiot, you look dumb, you look stupid. Why, why'd you let that hit you in the face? You got messed up, you piece of trash. Now give me your eyes. Huh, I feel so accomplished after throwing a go-kart at Roxy's face. It's one of the most satisfying moments in the entire game. Oh, God damn it! at least Monty stayed down for a little bit. Even after I blind you and cripple you, you're still motivated to ruin my day. But now that the best part of this game is over, it's time for the last boss fight. And this one's with our old friend, Roxy. She's blind, but she still has a surprising amount of effectiveness at finding us. We sidestep her after she first lunges at us, and she breaks the first door, and we instantly go in and duck under here. This causes her path to change to looping around to get us, and once she goes a little bit away and breaks the other door, we dash on over to the next area. Once we're in the next area, it's best not to waste time. We position ourselves in front of the next breakable door and sidestep her again when she lunges at it so she breaks the door. Once we're in the fire area, getting out quick is useful, but I'll be honest, I didn't do that. I forgot there were invisible walls here and got stuck a few times. But it seems like this actually did help in a way because it caused her to charge at me 
far from the vent. So it actually does seem like a good strategy to get her to lunge at you away from the vent and then dash to the vent while she's recovering. So I'd keep that in mind if you can. Now once we're in the vent, we're safe and done. My only gripe with this area is we don't actually get to fully kill Roxy, but you know, what can you do? I guess it's, you know, not a perfect game. Now, that is our last major hurdle until the ending. We head on out of Roxy Raceway and head straight down to Parts and Service one last time to install Roxy's eyes on Freddy. Now, despite me embarrassingly dying three times while I'm doing this maintenance, it's actually pretty easy, I'm just kind of dumb. Once we install Roxy's eyes on Freddy, Moon comes back one final time to give us one last fight. Now, our only goal is to run to the opening doors at the entrance as fast as we can. You plan on moving in, or you just want a job? Maybe join the internship program. You would make a great security guard. Gregory, I think you deserve a reward. Go check the main stage. We are not seduced by Vanessa's flirting, because in the end, we are on our Sigma, Batman, Patrick Bateman, Jack Horner, Platinum Trophy grind. Also, nothing really happens if you go to the main stage, so her dialogue seems like it's just referencing something that was cut from the game, but whatever. We leave the elevator and dash to the doors as quickly as we can. Once we get there, we just leave for the first ending we can get, and finally, we've done it. The achievement is done, and we have a 100% save. Oh, fantastic. I'm so happy. This was a long journey full of struggle, hate, fear, and maybe, maybe just a little bit of fun that Security Breach managed to grab from the depths of some satanic deal it made. Overall, I'll be honest, the game is better than it was at launch. The story is still a mess, some areas are unfinished or really just kind of badly designed, and there is still the occasional bug. But, I'll admit it. I did have a little bit of fun. This game is definitely in a way better state than it was when it first launched, and my curse of 100%ing this game has finally been lifted. And hey, if you're still here and went on this very long journey with me, I thank you, and I just ask, maybe you'd consider subscribing or liking the video. I don't usually say that, but we're getting pretty damn close to a thousand subs, so I'd really appreciate it. Also, sorry this took so long, I'll admit I was being lazy, and also it just took a while, so it was a mix of two things. But I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm still coming up with new ideas for videos, and maybe I'll do some more FNAF content. Who knows? But it's only if my sanity can handle it. That's the real tell okay?